Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, it's a horse thing. Today I'm finally giving you guys the repaint tutorial that you guys have been asking for for so long. I'm so sorry that it took so long to get finished, but it's definitely worth it. And I hope you guys stick around to the end because there is a lot of very important information in here. Remember guys, if you're very new to repainting, nothing is meant to be perfect on the first try. Just keep practicing, don't lose hope and you'll get there someday. So I hope you guys enjoy and let's get into the tutorial. If you guys have not already checked out my painting materials video, I highly, highly recommend you go check that out. It is so useful and will definitely make a lot more sense when you go and watch this tutorial after you watch that first video. The video is linked below, so please watch that before you watch this tutorial. So the first step is priming your model. So basically you want to thin out your white paint. Personally, I just use water, like one part water to one part paint, so equal parts. It doesn't, you don't need paint thinner. I don't think I've ever used paint thinner and water seems to work just fine. So just, you know, thin out your white paint and then put the paint on the horse. This is basically just going to make clear any imperfections that may be on it and help. So any paint that you put on top of this coat will not interfere with the base color of your horse. So personally, I don't make the coat too thick because there's no reason, unless the horse is going to be a white gray horse, you don't need it to be completely perfect and completely opaque, just enough to where it's white, but not too white, if you know what I mean. Because if you start blocking up the paint and making coats really thick, it's gonna take away details from the model that you're going to want to keep. Especially because like the model that I chose, it has little herring details in it, so, like indentations into the model already, especially um, like muscles on the face, muscles on the legs, the eyes. The mane, the hairs on the mane, just make sure you don't end up blocking that out. Here you can see I finished the priming model and it's not perfect and it doesn't need to be. This works just fine. That is a very important step, but after you do that, you're going to create your base color. I almost never use paints straight out of the, the tube or the box, whatever you have. I really like mixing my colors. It just, it gives you something unique, something that you're not going to see on a lot of other models. So this, watching this kind of makes me nauseous. So just listen to my voice and you don't have to watch this. Um, just make sure your coat color is accurate. Reference pictures are so, so, so important. And you want to make sure, like I try to make a fjord, okay? And if you guys know, fjords are like golden and she came out sun yellow. So just, be very careful when you're mixing your colors. Add in little bits at a time. Don't try and make too much paint. Using a container has also helped me out greatly so I can come back and use it again later if I need to. So same kind of thing applies like the priming stage. So basically just make sure that your paint is thinned out. Definitely go for lots of thin layers and not many thick layers because as I talked about, you don't want to take all those little special details in the model and make them disappear and go away because you didn't take your time and just used thin coats. Trust me, you're going to want those details in the end. So just take your time and over time, I think this took three or four coats and it looks pretty opaque like that. So that was pretty much the easiest part of the tutorial. Now I am going outside and I'm going to spray my model with my matte clear spray varnish. I'm not sure if it's exactly called a varnish, but make sure it's matte clear. You don't want gloss. You don't want semi-gloss. It needs to be matte. Now, when you're spraying it, make sure you're a good, um, at least foot away. That's 12 inches. Sorry if you guys use centimeters, but make sure you do that so it doesn't appear glossy. Because if you are too close, the matte spray will build up and it will get a very thick, glossy coat and you want it to be matte so it doesn't look shiny in the sun. So this is what she looks like afterwards and now we're gonna get on to the pastelling stage. So now that we're at the pastelling stage, I'm gonna go into a lot of detail because I know this is what you guys really are here for. So I am using pan pastel, which I did just show you guys the cover. You can go and use chalk pastel and what I'll do is I'll take like a strainer, like what you would use to make food and grind the chalk pastel over the strainer and you can make powder that way. Pan pastel personally is just more pigmented and easier to use. Now you're looking at my dirty hands from the paint, but please guys put gloves on. Your hands have natural oils on them. 
that will make the pastels very grainy. And not only will it make it look really grainy and gross, but you can get your fingerprints in it, and I have done that before, and I know you guys will sit there being like, no, I'm not getting my fingerprints in it. Just put the gloves on because I have thought about that, and it never works. So here what I'm doing is I'm making dapples. Basically, I am using um, makeup applicators, so I have thought about using a Q-tip before, but the issue with that is a Q-tip would be way too big. So this powder is basically, I'm just drawing it on in little circles, like in a honeycomb pattern, like that I'm showing you right there. And it will make it look like dapples and it will be light enough to where it's not like super dark and profound, but it still looks realistic. So please have a reference picture when you're doing dapples. Mine, personally, I was going for a specific one and not a gray dapple. A gray dapple would have them more on their body. Mine was just mostly on their stomach. Then after drawing them on, that's what she looks like on both sides. And personally, I think she came out really, really good. So of course, I went back and sprayed her again before I started the next step. So you definitely want to make sure that you are using your matte spray in between each pasteling step to make sure that you seal it in. So now I'm doing shading on the back. So I personally use makeup brushes and you want to dab it on like the up and down motions that I'm doing right here. If you go side to side, it is going to make it really grainy. So I apply pastel to the back, the neck, underneath the stomach, the groin area the eyes, the muzzle, sometimes a little bit on the ears, and then like the leg joints and the shoulders. And you want to build the color up as you go. So make sure that your first layer is not the darkest layer you want it to be, because as you layer them in between sprays, like if you do a layer pastel spray and then do more pastel, it is going to slowly get darker over time. There is no need to jump to it right away. Customizing a model is just something that takes a lot of time. Well, I know it looks like I'm being really aggressive with the horse. I promise you I'm not. But if you look at that tray in the middle in front of that black horse I have going on right there, I did mix pastels and that's perfectly fine too. I took some brown and some black and I mixed it up so I can use that as well to mix with the lighter brown. So you definitely want to build your layers up as you go. And then some horses like this one and other bays like they're going to have multiple different colors and you just need to be careful not to mix them. Like you don't want black to go somewhere that the brown is supposed to go. So just take your time, be careful, use the gloves. After I went and sprayed her, this is what she looked like. She also looks kind of glossy in this light, but she's she's really not. She's pretty matte. Um, however, you can see her highlights and her low lights. So there definitely is shading and it looks amazing. Like this is probably one of the best shading jobs I have done. The black is where it needs to be the dark brown is also where that needs to go a lot of people think the lightest part on the horse is like um the area between like the shoulders and the stomach this is also the brush that i'm using for markings next but it's the the shading does not go in between those areas it's on it's like in the middle of the stomach not in between I really hope that makes sense because I'm re-watching that and it sounds really complicated, but I hope it makes sense for you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I can answer them. Um, here I am adding a lot of water to my white paint. When you're doing markings, you need to make sure it is even more liquid, liquidier. There we go. I think that's a word. Than you think it's going to be or needs to be because if you have brush strokes when you put the paint on the horse for markings, it is going to look terrible. I promise you, you're going to spray it and it's going to look like you painted the horse. Make sure that you thin your marking paint out super, super well. And honestly, your markings coat is probably going to take a lot more time than your base coat did because it is so much thinner. That's a better word than liquidier. <laughs> it's just going to take a lot more time, but you need to be patient. All right. Markings is the, the thing that's going to take the most time on every single horse if they have it. But it, it is also the difference between a realistic horse and a model horse. So sometimes I'll do this, and I did with the paintbrush, but sometimes I'll take like um, a white pen, colored pencil type thing, and I'll mark it out on the horse beforehand. Um, that I've noticed that that doesn't really work if I've sprayed the horse though, which is hard because you have to do shading before you do markings. Anyway, that's another discussion for another time. So I just used my paintbrush and I kind of did a little outline 
and then I went in and filled the white paint in. This is just so if you do have any mistakes, you can take like a wet paper towel, a wet napkin, um, even a wet tissue if that's all you have and clean it up because once you have sprayed that model, there is a difference between the paint that's underneath and the paint on top. So it makes it super easy to clean up. And now I am moving on to face markings. So I, every single horse that I have done has a face marking or um, like a foot hoof marking. I completely blanked what the name is and I don't know why I'm talking with my hands because you guys literally cannot see me right now. And then I just gave her a little snip right there in white paint, which I will go back and fix with pastel or paint later. But this is what the markings are starting to look like after I have added a gazillion coats to them. So I did have the paint got a little thick right there, but I can go back right there with some water and thin it out, which sometimes it is easier to put water on the model than mix it on your little tray beforehand. Sometimes that just makes it smoother from my experience. And I bet you guys thought we were done with the markings, but we are not. So this is what's called a fan brush if you guys are not, if you guys don't know what that is. Um, and basically I use this to make very tiny little hairs around the markings of the horse. So I'm sorry because it was late at night and I was painting and I have my flash on, but there's my white paint and I'm realizing that there's a white paint on her that I'm going to have to take off later. Um, but... I took my fan brush and I dipped a little bit in the paint and now what I'm doing is I'm going around the edges on the outside with the fan brush and it's going to create these little spikes is not the best word but it ends up looking like herring so your markings aren't just like a flat straight line because that does not look realistic at all and if you go around and add those little spike looking hair things it definitely adds more realism. I don't know what else to call them other than spike hair things. And so what I'm doing right here actually is when I zoom in here in a second, yep, you're going to see that the little things are not always, the little spiky things, the hairs, <laughs> are not always completely opaque. They are kind of transparent and don't look right. So when I add more spiky things, I have to go back over it with water to smooth it out. So what this is, is basically just more yellow pastel. So if you look at a horse that has markings or is white, it is not completely pure white. It is very, very dirty, obviously, because it's a horse. So I take this yellow pastel and I'll put it um, like right above the hoof if they're if it's white or a marking. And I will also do it on like the knee joint as well. Um, because that is the part that we also shaded. So now I am moving on to the mane. So in the background, you can see I have a color that is quite a bit darker than the base coat here, um, which I end up, yeah. So you kind of you think of it like the base coat that you have already done. You don't need to worry too much about how thick it is, but do make sure that it is thin enough to where you don't lose that hair detail, like all the little lines. Um, and then what I end up doing is after I get enough coats on here, I will go back and I love making it like an ombre effect. So I will make some parts a lot darker as an ombre. And then I, what I will also do is I will do a dry brush technique. So I will have a dry brush with just a tiny bit of paint on it and I will move it back and forth over the the mane or the tail and it will give it a little bit more texture and a little bit more depth so that way it doesn't look like it's just one solid color and next we have the eye and i'm going to go very very fast so basically i'm modeling on this horse right here so you have the eye i'll put a lot more white in the back than i do the front but there is back on both sides sometimes i'll just do the whole thing if i feel like it i'll have the big black part that takes up majority of the eye that is a big part then i'll put color over it so there's a little line of black right there and then you put the pupil on top of it so you want that to you want the front part to be smaller than the back and then you have the hooves so this is also going to be kind of quick um i mix up for white i like to use a tan color i do love having multiple colored hooves for horses since usually not all the feet have a stocking or a sock or whatever. Um, this color looks very, very off in this picture right now. However, it is tan in the pictures that you look at. Um, so I'll do a very, 
um, light tan part and then I'll take a darker brown and just dab it on so it kind of looks like dirt, you know? Because I hate hooves that are solid color. You want them to look like they've been walking around and they've been doing something. So I'll have that original color and then I'll just dab on a little bit of paint. And now I'm asked about this a lot. So I use DuraClear gloss varnish and this is what I apply to the eyes. You can see that right there. It does dry very glossy and the nostrils, the ears and the hooves. And then this is the final horse. So this is what she ended up coming out like. She is absolutely gorgeous. Like I love her so much. And I really hope that this tutorial was able to help you guys for your repaints. If you guys have a YouTube channel and you guys make a repaint using these tips, there is my at that I just put right there and you can tag me and I would love to see them. However, I hope that this tutorial helped you guys so much because I have gotten so many questions and I know that I have been um, saying that this tutorial is going to be coming out for a long time. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you like what you saw, please click the subscribe button down below, click the like button, leave a comment, and leave a video suggestion if you have any. I've already had somebody comment on wanting a more in-depth dapple tutorial, so let me know if you guys would like to see that. Let me know if you guys want to see any tack tutorials. I would love to put those up as well, and I hope you guys have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!